subsurface drip irrigated corn, uh, which we have on our Eco Drip SDI system right behind us, and we have an irrigated sorghum competition. And I'll kind of show you the layout of those, but um, each one is simulated to represent a farming operation. Uh, it is a 3,000 acre farm for sprinkler corn. It is a 1,000 irrigated uh, acre farm for sorghum. And then the SDI is actually a 3,000 acre farm, but it is assuming the uh, there's only 1,000 of SDI and 2,000 of sprinkler. Uh, we do allow our producers to make six different management decisions through a password protected login, uh, which you'll probably hear a little bit more about in the panel. Uh, but they get to make decisions on insurance. They get to make decisions on nitrogen management, which includes a free plant, a side dress, and then they get four different fertigation options. They have to schedule in real time irrigation. Uh, we run the system twice a week for uh, the pivot and we run it four different times for the SDI system. Uh, and they basically have up until a point in time in that morning and then we start it after all those decisions come in. And then we also um, allow them to select their own seed and uh, tell us what they want us to plant it at. So with that, and lastly they have to market their grain. So since it is a competition, we have three awards. Uh, this is actually probably one of the more exciting parts of it uh, because we have a big awards banquet in December. Uh, but we are a profit uh, and efficiency competition. We are not a yield competition. So the highest award is most profitable. The second one is going to be most efficient in water and nitrogen. Uh, that is a uh, $1,000 award. Uh, this is how we uh, evaluate our efficiency. So it is very collective. So if you do really well in water and less optimal on your nitrogen, that will ding you. We're really looking for complementary approaches there. And then lastly, uh, we were kind of encouraged to still have a yield contest um, component of it. So it's a $500 award, but you will not get $500 if you are uh, not the most profitable. So if you are the least profitable farm, you get a big goose egg. So, but you still get the, the plaque. So uh, Just got to give you a little bit of background on how we developed. This is year number three. Uh, we started uh, with uh, about 17 growers and two student groups in 2017. Um, you can see where they were distributed. Uh, very thankful to uh, NUBA, uh, the Nebraska Water Balance Alliance, and then also our NRD managers from um, the neighboring NRDs. They really helped us identify those growers to compete that like first year, uh, really, which set us up for success and ability to expand. Uh, year number. Okay. That's good, because I'm actually getting a little exhausted yelling. All right, and so year number two, uh, through that success, we were able to go ahead and expand. Uh, there was a lot of interest that was driven from the competition, and we were able to go ahead and actually Matt Long, which is going to be on our panel, he reached up to us, and he decided to go ahead and compete along with Tim Franklin from Kansas. So you can see our distribution started to get a little bit bigger. We have Ron McAvicka from York, uh, and he'll be on our panel today. Uh, but basically, we started to expand, and so this year, uh, we decided to go a little bit more, and now we have four competitions. We uh, connected with Jason, so he has this competition down in Oklahoma, but we have about 150 individuals uh, competing across those four competitions. We have 24 teams competing in sprinkler irrigated corn. We have 10 teams in sprinkler irrigated sorghum, 16 in SDI corn, and there's nine teams down in Oklahoma under sprinkler irrigated corn. And what's interesting about the Oklahoma one is our first year winner, Ward Pullman, actually is down there competing with Jason, and Jason's going to be talking to us later uh, uh, in our breakout session. So just to give you kind of an idea of our competitions, we have every team has uh, three randomized plots. Uh, the SDI field, uh, which is shown here, uh, is located right behind us. Uh, so each team has a randomized plot in blocks A, B, and C, and all decisions that they submit through the forms we will actually put into play in the field um, with our individual team. Now here is our pivot, uh, which is located on the other side of Highway 83. That is where our corn and sorghum uh, competitions are located. Um, again, you can see um, how we're looking at breaking that up. We want to be able to provide as much statistical evidence of who won and why they won. Uh, that does present some challenges because we have a lot of decisions that are being made, uh, but we do want it not to be a single plot. So, um, and all decisions that are being made are using uh, more 
subduction scale equipment. We are not using plot planters. We are not hand harvesting. Uh, we are using um, more representative uh, machinery and so forth. So before I go any farther, I do really want to uh, thank all the partners and sponsors. Uh, we have excellent participants that are putting their time into this, and we have a lot of industry, uh, nonprofit, seed companies, the commodity boards have been fantastic, but a lot of people that are providing services, uh, funding, operate, uh, funding to keep this going. So again, thank you guys all very much. We're very, uh, very appreciative. So with that, I want to go ahead and highlight some of the decisions that have made um, so far this year to kind of give you a feel of maybe the spread. Um, so then when we release the results of the banquet in December, uh, we'll see kind of how they played out. But before we're going to switch over, because I do want to ask a couple of questions using our very fancy Slido technology. some of the, the technology that we have showcased, but I wanted to ask, just as a collective group, since we have both growers and industry here, do we feel that we have the necessary technology currently available to be more efficient and profitable in today's setting? One is pretty much no, and 10 is pretty much yes. Too many more, so let's we can go ahead and switch back to the PowerPoint. Yep. All right. So with that, I want to show a little bit of the timeline so far. This is a about a nine to ten month process. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting. I think this year it was in early March, if I remember correctly. Um, but basically, at that point in time, they have to select their insurance, and you can kind of see the stair stepping of decisions that have to take place. Um, currently, the only decisions remaining are marketing up until November 15th, and then also um, still making irrigation decisions. Uh, I do want to kind of reiterate on the, the process. Each one is tied um, to the uh, online forms. So again, I can't thank the participants enough because it is very much real time. If you want water on Monday, you have to tell us by 10 o'clock that morning. So, uh, so with that, I wanted to showcase some of the technology that we currently have um, at the uh, disposal of the participants. And a lot of this is actually available on our TAPS website that anybody can go in and log in and play around with. Uh, so we have imagery from Air Scout. Um, Brian Sutton is with us right here. They've been with us for the last three years. Um, so we have both visual and thermal imagery collected from them. Uh, this is Terra Avion. Uh, this is actually a picture of Jason Warren's field down south um, and looking at the competition across their participants located there. Um, I can't tell you which one, but I don't know which one Rourke is out of that, that group, so uh, maybe you can get Jason to tell you if you're interested. Uh, we also have climate field view. Um, anybody can go ahead and get on there to have their um, access to their imagery. We're also going to be looking next year to be pulling in the as planting and then as harvesting uh, data is being collected so that people can access that. Uh, we also are partnering with Farmer's Edge and we've done that from the beginning as well. Uh, they have uh, imagery they collect from Planet Labs. They also have an on-site weather station which is located right on the edge of the pivot. Uh, and then they um, have some additional modeling capability uh, that we can look at both in terms of nitrogen and then also uh, crop performance. 
Uh, DTN, DTN is probably one of the more unique ones that we have because uh, DTN does provide marketing insight and information. Uh, we also have a weather station associated with that. Again, that is located right across the pivot. Um, later this afternoon, if anybody's interested in some of this technology, let us know. Uh, we do want to go ahead and showcase and maybe talk about some of the differences and, and some of the options that are available uh, out there today. Uh, we have some in-field instrumentation. Uh, we have AquaSpy soil water monitoring devices. Each team has individual access to one probe. Uh, and this is for the corn uh, competitions, both here and down into Oklahoma. Um, I think Jason is going to show the drastic difference of how our water response looks compared to Oklahoma. So, uh, definitely interesting. Uh, we have crop metrics in the sorghum uh, competition. Uh, one thing I do like about the crop metrics, uh, Nick Lambers, I believe, is here. Uh, he does provide the weekly summary reports to the, the participants. Uh, this is just kind of a snapshot of what he uh, shared with one of the teams last year. Uh, Arable Mark, or Arable is the company, their sensor Arable Mark, it's the Frisbees. If you look um, right behind this tent, it, it looks like a bunch of saucers are right above the corn. There's 16 of them out there. Uh, each of the SEI teams have access to this. Uh, basically, it is a small weather station, but it also has a suite of technology and sensors uh, to look at both canopy reflectance, so you can have your NDVI estimates and plant growth. Uh, also, they have a thermal band on there so that they can look at canopy temperature. Um, so we have those at the uh, disposal of our SDI competitors. Uh, we have Phytech. Phytech is a company out of Israel. Uh, the uniqueness of their sensor is basically it is a uh, clamping, it's a dendrometer, so you clamp it on the stalk of the plant, and it actually measures the shrinking and swelling of that plant, and then they relate that to water stress. Uh, we have the Phytech sensors in the SDI and pivot corn here, and we have some that are located right on the field edge if anybody's interested in taking a close look. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show the decisions that have currently been made. Um, but first, I wanted to kind of highlight the three years that we've been competing in North Platte, the range is simply precipitation. Temperature and some other climatic variables are very drastic as well. Uh, but in 2017, actually all three years we've been above normal, except 2017 we started very hot and very dry. Then we had a, uh, I think a three inch rain in like two hours, and you can see that right here. Uh, this year is very different. Uh, as everybody knows, it's been extremely wet. Um, as of three days ago, we've had almost 19 inches of rainfall from May 1st up until uh, three days ago. So with that, it's very interesting to see as we looked at last year and the year before as irrigation decisions and then what our growers currently are doing, uh, both across systems as well as across uh, crop selection. So with that, I wanted to go ahead and show uh, the range in uh, hybrids that were selected. This is the sprinkler competition. Uh, as you can see, some of the statistics on the edge, there was 15 different hybrids selected across those 24 teams. The population range was anywhere from 29,000 to 35,000. Uh, this is really important and we're going to talk a little bit about it because we, as most of you know, hybrid has a very large impact on both yield output but also we've seen in terms of irrigation response and fertility response. Um, and so we're trying to tease out some of those um, variables. But um, in general, if we bring that to uh, the economics, basically it ranges anywhere from $77 per acre to $118 per acre uh, across those teams for their for planting. And that doesn't uh, factor in the actual planting operation itself, just the cost of the seed. Now the SDI corn, very similar to the, uh, the pivot. And one thing I should have mentioned, each color represents a different company. So Pioneer is green, Big Cobb is blue, uh, but there was 11 hybrids. If you look at both SDI and the uh, sprinkler irrigated, uh, there was 20 different hybrids across those two competitions. Uh, and then the cost was very similar, $77 to $117 per acre. Now when we look at the sorghum, uh, so this is the second year of our sorghum competition. Last year, we actually only had two different hybrids selected. Um, as compared to this year, interestingly enough, all 10 teams selected a different hybrid. Uh, those ranged anywhere from being planted at 70,000 to 125,000 seeds per acre. And then the cost was anywhere from 13 to $28 uh, per acre. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because that was a, a big driver of our efficiency winner last year. 
So looking at the irrigation applied, well, we had nearly 19 inches of rain so far. Uh, this is a uh, graph that's showing the three different competitions. On the farthest right-hand side is the sprinkler corn, the middle is SDI corn, and the far left is sprinkler sorghum. Uh, the bottom is showing the minimum applied across all teams within that competition. The max is up there, and we also shared the average and the median. Uh, in general, we've had about, at this time, the last two years, closer to about 10 inches of applied irrigation. Uh, this year, our upper is 5.9 under the sprinkler irrigated corn. Uh, and you can see the sorghum, uh, not a lot of people put water on the sorghum. So. Now when we think of the, look at the nitrogen, uh, that is actually very similar to the last couple of years. Uh, same style of graph. The sprinkler corn has ranged anywhere from 140 to 270 pounds per acre applied. Um, I do believe all teams did opt to do a split application of fertigation. Uh, very similar to uh, the SDI, we did see in general a slightly reduction in applied fertilizer under SDI and then also um, under sorghum. Uh, sorghum probably had the lar one of the largest ranges, uh, much more even than last year, um, between the 70 and 215 pounds per acre. So with that, I'm going to switch over and ask a couple of questions real quick. six decisions that they have access to, which one do you think is the most influential on yield? And I'd love to tell you I have an answer, because I don't. <laughs> so, but we will have some insight at the banquet, so we will have an opportunity once we start running the numbers as all the marketing and uh, yield is generated, so. <coughs> All righty, Chuck, do you want to go to the next question? So same exact question, but instead of impact on yield, what about profit? like marketing definitely is taking the lead. All right, so I have just a few more uh, slides before we get into the growers panel. Uh, I do want to go ahead and show, so in addition to all the data that's being gen generated by the industry partners and the instruments that we have installed in all the different plots, we also do collect a lot of data. Um, we have a, a partnership with USDA ARS out of Fort Collins, uh, Kendall DeYoung. Uh, basically, they donated and shared their high clearance applicator, which we retrofitted. Uh, so we have that attached with four um, IRTs, so we're looking at canopy temperature. And then we also have four crop circles, uh, and that is looking at uh, reflectance for NDVI and NDRE. Um, so primarily more on the nitrogen status. Uh, we collect a lot of leaf tissue samples, biomass samples, soil samples. Uh, we collect water content using uh, both neutron and uh, gravimetric. So all this information, we do try to provide a little bit more insight into why things played out. Uh, and some of this stuff will become much more useful as we uh, share a new series that our TAPS coordinator, Crystal Rhodes, is leading as our tips from TAPS. And those will be more in informational um, articles coming out. Uh, just a little bit of the data that's come off of the field so far. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the leaf tissue samples sent back to us yet from the lab. 
But if we look at the reflectance data in terms of normalized difference red edge uh, from the crop circles compared to applied nitrogen from corn and sorghum, we can see that there is a, a pretty uh, steep increase from our control. Um, and then the question is going to be very exciting to see. This is right before people had an option to do, uh, I believe, one to two last fertigation events. And so how this might have shifted based off of those decisions. Because um, it will be interesting to see um, how they end up making that last decision. Now, likewise, on the irrigation, we can look at how much irrigation has been applied relative to how much water has been depleted in the soil. Uh, so this is looking at the SDI, and we can see there is a, a rather strong correlation um, as from applied to uh, depletion in stored water. Um, again, we can take this information and look at um, um, where we actually stressed that crop and maybe what potential that had on reduction in yield. So with that, uh, one thing we trying to address some questions that we had from the participants the last couple of years. When we have six different decisions that are taking place, it's really hard to tease out what are those influencing factors. Um, and uh, the big one was uh, hybrid uh, selection. So this year in the, all competitions, uh, it's the corn, and we had to do it slightly different for the sorghum, but we have the hybrid that the uh, team selected, and we have a reference hybrid right next to it. So everybody has a uniform hybrid and seeding rate that their decisions are being imposed on. We also took eight of the most common selected hybrids and we put that into a different area and we're doing a ramp with water or ramp with nitrogen just to see that spread of response across those hybrids. And we also are looking at a benchmarking of all 20 corn and all 10 sorghum hybrids to see what is the optimal uh, or the potential yield um, under non-limiting water and nitrogen, then what is also the lower uh, control um, across those 20 hybrids. So using that information, we should be able to have a better insight on what was the difference between water and nitrogen decision making and impact on efficiency and profit and yield versus hybrid selection and its impact on those three um, award metrics. So with that, I do want to go ahead again, um, uh, point out Crystal Rhodes, uh, you want to raise your hand, Crystal? She is our program coordinator. She's the one that actually interacts pretty much uh, heavily with all the participants and a lot of the, the industry and uh, you know, partners and sponsors. Uh, we do have a newsletter um, on our TAPS website that comes out every couple weeks that does provide a lot more insight. It spotlights some of the participants, some of the industry. Um, definitely, if you're interested in following it along, uh, reach out to Crystal or go to our TAPS website. We do try to get more information out there, and now it's a new series, Tips from TAPS, uh, kind of uh, a way to get some of the data that's being collected back out into why things played out the way they did. Um, obviously, we do our field tours, our banquet. Uh, we had a summer intern, Amy Kremen, uh, from Colorado State. Uh, she was able to get an intern from Tufts University, uh, spent some time here in Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma interacted with a lot of our participants and so some of the stuff that she's generating is very uh, insightful on some of the challenges that are associated with production these days. Uh, we also are looking at doing some case studies uh, and we try to interview and talk with our participants and really what are the challenges and really is, can TAPS play a role in trying to address those challenges. Um, and lastly, we partner with several outlets such as Nebraska Farmer and Tyler Harris on uh, sharing information. Uh, so with that, if anybody is interested in looking at the and learning about the winners, um, our banquet is December 12th. It's a great time. Uh, food, drinks, uh, a lot of networking. Uh, so if interested, reach out to Crystal Rhodes. Her email is down there at the bottom. Um, and let us know. It's on December 12th. And we are limited in size, so um, I would RSVP earlier than later. And with that, we are going to go to the drawer panel.